The Mi Band 8 International Edition is finally out, meaning I could test it in even more detail than before, and it might be the device I'd recommend to a select group of my viewers. Depending on when and where you get it, this device will likely set you back between $40 and $60, and for that price tag, it's pretty impressive. In this video, we're gonna systematically and scientifically test the heart rate and sleep stage tracking of this budget smart band. So let's get right to it. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now in this video, we're going to skip any more intro and get right to the testing. If you still want to know more about the particular specs of this watch, just check Xiaomi's website. I want to start off by testing the heart rate tracking accuracy. I tested this on myself for 6 indoor cycling sessions, 13 bike rides and 4 weightlifting sessions. And as always, we're going to start by looking at indoor cycling, since this is one of the easiest exercises for a watch to track. Now to test that performance, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Mi Band 8 against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. And here you can see an overview of that performance. Now each dot here is a single heart rate measurement, with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and on the vertical axis the value according to the Mi Band 8. And the closer the points are to the blue line, the better the agreement, and the darker black the color the more dots that there are. And as you can see, generally Generally, there's actually a pretty good agreement between the Mi Band 8 and the Polar H10 ECG chest strap. Most points are along the blue line, though there is definitely a bit of deviation. So there are some points above it, meaning it detected a too high heart rate, and also below it when it detected a too low heart rate. The correlation is also pretty good, so that's this R value up here at 0.93. Now the correlation cannot be higher than 1, so a correlation of 0.93 is pretty okay. But we need to look at the individual rides to see why it quite often detected a too high heart rate. And here we have the first example interval spinning session where we see a decent agreement between the Mi Band 8 and the ECG chest strap. Along the horizontal axis here we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis, with in blue green my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red my heart rate according to the Mi Band 8. And as you can see, generally the patterns are pretty similar, though the Mi Band 8 does struggle sometimes detecting the decrease in my heart rate. So you can see that right here during this first interval, it didn't fully detect a dip in my heart rate, and also right here and right here was there a slight delay in detecting that decrease in my heart rate. Still, overall this doesn't look too bad, but these are likely the reason why it sometimes detected a too high heart rate. And if we go to the next example, we see more or less the same thing. It's generally pretty good at the peaks of my heart rate, but there's sometimes a slight delay in picking up a decrease in my heart rate, but it's very minor here. And this is generally what we see for most spinning sessions, and also right here we see a pretty good agreement, though there were one or two spinning sessions where it struggled more. For instance, as you can see during this spinning session right here, it really struggled a lot more detecting those changes in my heart rate. So you can see that both during the quick decreases and increases in my heart rate, it just couldn't keep up. Especially here in the middle, it really didn't detect that full dip in my heart rate. And that's also what we see for this spinning session right here. In the beginning, it just couldn't completely follow that dip in my heart rate. Later on, it does look a lot better. Still, I expect it will likely be good enough for many of you. All right, that's looking pretty okay, I would say so far. However, to get a clearer understanding of how the Mi Band 8 compares to the competition, let's put these results into context. Let's compare it against almost 70 different watches I've previously tested. That way, you can determine if there's potentially a better choice out there for you. And that overview is displayed right here. Now the correlation value I was talking about before is the metric we will use for this, which is displayed along the horizontal axis right here. And we want that value to be as close to 1 as possible. And on the vertical axis, I ordered the watches from worst to best. So the further to the right and the higher a device is, the better is its correlation with the reference device. And here I marked the Mi Band 8 in red. And as you can see, it's doing pretty decently but it's really difficult to read anything right now, so let's go into just the better performing watches. And here we have just the watches with a correlation of 0.9 or higher, with again the Mi Band 8 marked in red right here. And as you can see, amongst the better performing watches, it's okay, though it's not the absolute best out there. It's close to, for instance, the Huawei Band 6, but also the Garmin 4965 and the Garmin Phoenix 7. So it's definitely doing decently, I would say, but there are better watches out there, especially Apple watches, some Huawei watches. But for instance, the Google Pixel watch, which I tested recently, seems to be doing better than the Mi Band 8, but this is really a different price category. 
So overall, this doesn't look too bad for the price, but let's make things more difficult and let's take a look at the performance of the Mi Band 8 during a more difficult exercise for a watch to track, cycling outside. Now cycling outside increases the tension on my arms because I have to hold on to the handlebars and there's also much more movement and bumpiness, making it much harder for a watch to get a clean heart rate signal. I tested the Mi Band 8 for a total of 13 bike rides. Now here we have a similar overview plot to before but now for biking outside and as you can see there's quite a bit more deviation here. There are still many points close to the blue line but there's also quite a few points away from it. Now there's a big cloud of points here a bit below the blue line in the higher heart rate range but also quite a few points further away from the blue line for instance right here but also above it right here. We can also see that the correlation is much much lower now compared to what we saw for cycling indoors. So instead of 0.93 I believe it was it's now 0.5. Six, so really a lot lower but let's take a look at those individual bike rides to see what those patterns look like and here we have the first bike ride i wanted to share with you and this one actually looks pretty good it generally matches quite well between the mi band 8 in red and the polar h10 in blue only here in the end did it struggle quite a bit more still this is one of the better bike rides for many bike rides the watch struggled much more you can see that for this bike ride for instance where for much of the ride it detected a way too low heart rate especially right here in the beginning and looking at this example right here we see something very similar the mi band 8 just struggles a lot detecting my heart rate accurately and i suspect this is due to the extra tension on my arm and on my wrist when i'm cycling so when i'm cycling indoors i'm much more relaxed legs with my arms I don't have to steer but when I'm cycling outside I have to hold on to the handlebars more tightly and there's also much more bumpiness making it much harder for the watch and the Mi Band just isn't good enough to reliably detect my heart rate in these moments and that's generally what we see for many bike rides where the Mi Band tends to detect a too low heart rate as you can see for instance right here but on other occasions it will also detect a too high heart rate as you can see at the end of this session right here and we see this same at the end of this bike ride right here so overall I cannot recommend the Mi Band 8 for cycling outside. And this is a similar overview to before but now for biking outside with again the Mi Band 8 marked in red and as you can see in this case the Mi Band 8 definitely isn't amongst the better performing watches. Most other watches I tested are actually doing better than the Mi Band 8. This correlation just above 0.5 just isn't very good. Many watches have much higher correlations. Again the Apple watches are doing the best but also some Huawei watches are quite good. So for biking outside there are many better choices you can make instead of getting a Mi Band 8. Finally, let's take a look at weightlifting, which is generally one of the most difficult exercises for a watch to track because of the high tension on my wrist and my arm during each set. However, first a quick side note, if you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Of course, you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you like, comment and subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's take a look at the performance of the Mi Band 8 for weightlifting. And again, this is the overview plot you're familiar with, so we want those points to be as close to the blue line as possible, but we see there's many points away from the blue line, especially here in the higher heart rate range, we see it detected a much too low heart rate. So according to the ECG chest strap, I had a heart rate between 115 and 145 ppm, but the Mi Band 8 instead detected a heart rate of between 85 and 115 ppm, so not very accurate. This suggests to me that the moment I started doing a set, the watch is wasn't able to track my heart rate so that increased tension in my wrist made it much harder to get a good signal and the Mi Band 8 just wasn't able to deal with this. We also see that the correlation is again very low at 0.59 but let's take a look at this individual weightlifting sessions to see if it indeed struggled with those peaks in my heart rate. And here you can see the results for the first weightlifting session and indeed this is what we expected. The Mi Band 8 just cannot detect those peaks in my heart rate so you can see clearly the peaks in my heart rate during each set based on the ECG chest strap in blue and the Mi Band 8 just keeps detecting my baseline heart rate so in between sets as you can see for instance right here but also right here it does seem to be able to roughly track my heart rate but then the moment I start a set I just cannot keep up that's also what we see for the other training sessions like this one right here again all the peaks are not detected and you see the same thing for this training session. So also for weightlifting, I generally wouldn't recommend the Mi Band 8, but let's put these results into perspective by comparing them against many of the other watches I've tested in the past. And again, here we have a similar overview plot to before, but now for weightlifting with again, the Mi Band 8 marked in red, which as you can see is really among some of the poorest performing watches. 
many watches are doing a lot better than the Mi Band 8, though generally I wouldn't recommend most of these watches for weightlifting. Only the watches with a correlation of 0.9 or higher or preferably 0.95 or higher are watches I would recommend for weightlifting. Anything below 0.9 just probably isn't good enough. My recommendation generally for weightlifting is just to use an ECG chest strap. This is the most reliable way of tracking your heart rate during weightlifting. So it seems that for a static exercise like cycling indoors, the Mi Band 8 is good enough for most people at least, but the moment it becomes a bit harder, the Mi Band 8 really struggles. Now given the price tag, I don't want to be too harsh, but be aware of what you're buying. If you just care about basic heart rate tracking while resting or something simple like cycling indoors, it might be good enough. However, when you're doing exercises that are more dynamic, it's probably better to get another device. Therefore, I'd give the heart rate tracking of the Mi Band 8 3 out of 5 stars. Next, let's take a look at the sleep stage tracking of the Mi Band 8, which I tested during a total of 7 nights. Now, to test the sleep stage tracking performance, I'll compare the Mi Band 8 to the ZMAX EEG headband, which can actually measure my brain waves. Now, this device also has its limitations, especially when it comes to detecting awake time. Now, I've discussed this in several of my recent videos, so I won't go into details here, but what it boils down to is that I'll mostly ignore the awake time detection in this analysis. And here you can see an overview of those sleep test results. Now on top are the sleep stages as recorded by the ZMAX EEG device, and on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the Mi Band 8. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the ZMAX was predicted as each sleep stage by the Mi Band 8. And if they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. First of all, we see that only about 37% of what was deep sleep according to the EEG device was also deep sleep according to the Mi Band 8, so that's not very good. A lot of it was actually predicted differently in this case as being light sleep at about 60%. So more of what was deep sleep according to the EEG device was actually predicted as being light sleep than as deep sleep, so that's not looking that great. Now looking at the individual nights will help us understand this even better, and here we see the first night I wanted to share with you. On top we have the sleep stages as recorded by the ZMAX EEG headband, with the clock time on the horizontal axis and my sleep stages on the vertical axis. And on the bottom we have a similar plot but now for the Mi Band 8. And in purple I highlighted the deep sleep as recorded by the ZMAX EEG device, and as you can see there's a marginal agreement between both. The first segment actually agrees quite well, the second segment isn't detected by the Mi Band 8, and as you can see there's a lot of extra deep sleep recorded by the Mi Band 8 later in the night. And we see something similar for this second night. There's some agreement in terms of deep sleep, but there's just a lot of extra deep sleep detected. And for other nights, it actually looks a bit worse. One example is this night right here, where I had most of my deep sleep in the beginning of the night, and the Mi Band 8 only detected some of this, and also detected a lot of extra deep sleep, also here just before waking up, which is very unlikely. And we see something similar for this night right here, where there's a marginal agreement between the EEG device and the Mi Band 8 here in the beginning of the night, and the Mi Band 8 detects a lot of extra deep sleep later in the night, and this is just not a normal sleep pattern. Light sleep agreement is also not that great at about a 55% agreement. A lot of it is actually predicted as deep sleep instead at about 31%. And REM sleep really agrees the worst out of any of the sleep stages. Only 20% of what was REM sleep according to the EEG device was also predicted as REM sleep by the Mi Band 8, so that's really low. A lot of it was actually predicted as being light sleep instead at about 47%, but also a quite significant fraction was predicted as being deep sleep at about 28%. So more of what was REM sleep according to the EEG device was predicted as either light sleep or deep sleep by the Mi Band 8 than as actual REM sleep by the Mi Band 8, so that's a really low percentage. But let's take a look at those individual nights. And looking at the individual nights, we can see how bad the REM sleep agreement actually is between the EEG device and the Mi Band 8. So I had several REM sleep segments, about 5 in total I would say right here, and the Mi Band 8 was only able to detect one of them maybe, and I suspect this is more by chance than by actual ability. So we can see the Mi Band did detect some REM sleep, but it's not matching at all with the EEG device. And that's what we generally see for many of the nights, that there's not really a lot of overlap between the REM sleep detected by the EEG device and that by the Mi Band 8. You can see here the Mi Band 8 detected almost no REM sleep here in the beginning of the night, and there's only a little bit of overlap. Now I'm not going to show you all the nights, but again here I had several REM sleep segments and the Mi Band 8 just didn't detect the same REM sleep segments as the EEG device. And I think REM sleep is one of the things that the EEG device can generally pick up on quite easily, and the Mi Band 8 just really struggles with this. 
Now, in terms of awake time detection, this also didn't agree very well between the EEG device and the Mi Band 8. And as I said, I don't want to focus on this, but just for completeness, 22.2% of what was awake time according to the EEG device was also predicted as awake time by the Mi Band 8. And a lot more was instead predicted as either being light sleep at about 43% or deep sleep at about 24%. But yeah, we're not gonna focus on this. Let's quickly look at those individual nights. Now looking at the awake moments, we do see somewhat of a match between the EEG device and the Mi Band 8. And I would generally only focus on those longer awake moments. And those patterns are somewhat the same for all night. So also here, the awake moment detected by the EEG device was also detected by the Mi Band 8. And that's also what we see for this night right here. I would say there were a couple of longer awake moments, some right here and one right here. And all of these to some degree were also detected by the Mi Band 8. So as I said, I wouldn't rely on the EEG device here as well. Just those really long awake moments are probably moments where I really woke up for a bit. And those are quite easy to detect for both. So similar to what we saw for the Chinese edition of the Mi Band 8, the sleep stage tracking of the international version doesn't look very promising. But to show you how the Mi Band 8 performs compared to other watches out there, let's put these results into perspective. Now this graph right here shows you an overview of the agreement of different watches with different EEG references. Along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the individual sleep stages and on the vertical axis is the agreement with the worst sleep stage. Now the better the agreement the more to the top right the device is. And as I've mentioned in previous videos this overview is a bit complicated because I use different reference devices. The watches marked in green were tested against the ZMAX EEG reference which we also use in this video. The ones marked in purple blue were tested against the polysomnography device which is the gold standard in sleep stage tracking and the ones not marked in any color were tested against the Dream 2 EEG headband, which is my general reference, but Dream went bankrupt, so I cannot use it anymore. Now, the overall patterns are roughly the same no matter what reference I use. So in this case, we see that the Apple Watches are some of the best performers, followed by, for instance, the Aura Ring and the Whoop Strap, and the Huawei Watches really aren't that great at sleep stage tracking, though they are pretty good at heart rate tracking. Now, we can see that two units I had of the Chinese version of the Mi Band 8 didn't do that well at sleep stage tracking. They were really the worst out there out of any watches when I compared them to my Dream 2 EEG headband. Band. But let's now see how the international version of the Mi Band 8 did when I used the ZMAX EEG headband as a reference. And that is plotted right here for the Mi Band 8 international version in green. And as you can see, the results are more or less the same. It's really one of the worst sleep stage trackers out there, at least out of the ones I've tested. And I think it just uses the same algorithm as the Chinese version. They're really close to each other. So overall, I would say I cannot recommend the Mi Band 8 for sleep stage tracking. For just tracking things like your total time in bed and maybe even your awake moments, it's quite okay. So for the price, that's not that bad, but for tracking your actual sleep stages, so deep sleep, light sleep, and REM sleep, I just wouldn't rely on it. It's really on the bottom left, so really not reliable in my opinion. So yeah, I would say that the sleep stage tracking of the Mi Band 8 doesn't seem very good. For roughly tracking your total time spent in bed, it's likely good enough, but I wouldn't rely on the sleep stage tracking. Therefore, overall, I'd give the sleep stage tracking of the Mi Band 8 two out of five stars. Now, before getting to my final conclusions, let's briefly discuss some of the limitations of this test and the general type of testing I perform. One, it's just done on me generally, maybe sometimes on a second person, but the number of people it's tested on is limited. Two, I only test devices for a limited time with the software that is available at that time. And three, even my reference devices, like for instance my sleep reference, aren't exactly perfect. Still, I believe this kind of systematic test does give us a rough impression of how these watches perform, and also in this case the Mi Band 8. But as always, also check out some other reviewers. But okay, what is my final conclusion on the Mi Band 8? Well, this is actually a hard one for me. Just purely based on the test that I did, it isn't that great. It does a few things well enough, but nothing amazing. However, considering the very low price tag and the fact that the build quality and the screen is actually quite good, I am conflicted. If you just want a basic tracker that can track your heart rate accurately when you're not moving too much and will roughly at least keep track of how much time you spend in bed, then the Mi Band 8 is still a smart band I can recommend, but only because of the low price tag. It's not gonna come close in performance to, for instance, an Apple Watch or a Pixel Watch, but yeah, you can buy about 10 Mi Band 8s for the price of one of those. Just looking at the general sleep and heart rate tracking, I'd give the Mi Band 8 two to maybe three out of five stars. However, this does feel too low somehow because of the price tag. So take all of those factors into account and make your own decision. Is the Mi Band 8 the smart band you've been looking for? It really depends. Now, if you do decide to get a Mi Band 8, a Whoop Strap, an Aura Ring, 
another device or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper. And at the same time, you want to support this channel. There are different affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below. They do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Now, given that you watched this whole video on the Mi Band 8, check out this video on the Huawei Band 8, which did even better than the Mi Band 8 in many categories, or this video on my general recommendations for sports and health tracking. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.